It's all Hallow's Eve, and all seems to be well. I hope that you enjoy this show. <laughs> Excited for the show. I almost didn't make it though. I walked by a dog park and they ran off with my leg. <laughs> I got it back though. Thank you. 
If you don't stick around for the show, it will be a grave mistake. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, where is my sparkling water? I asked for sparkling water. I love the sound it makes when it hits the floor. <laughs> because I don't have organs. Are you waiting? It's worth the wait. <laughs> You're almost there. Mercer Monster Mash will start momentarily. <laughs>
show starting soon. You better get some snacks. <laughs> Bring some for me. I promise if you stay, I'll tickle your funny bone. <laughs> I'm a skeleton, you don't know that yet, but if you stick around, you'll see. <laughs> Mr. Monster Mash Virtual Edition. Stick around if you dare. <laughs> Check. Is this thing on? <laughs> Are you sure? It doesn't seem like it's on. Well, okay, if you're positive. Welcome to Mercer Monster Mash Virtual Edition. It's time for the show to begin. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Mercer Monster Mash Virtual Edition. I'm Lori with the Riff Raff Arts Collective and we're coming to you from the beautiful Renaissance Theater in the Mercer Street Grassroots District of downtown Princeton, West Virginia. 
Now, the Mercer Monster Mash tradition was started all the way back in 2013, right when the renaissance of our downtown was just amping up. It was a two-day Halloween extravaganza created by a passionate group of community members who really loved Halloween. Thousands of people packed these streets for trick-or-treat on Mercer Street, costume contests, Rocky Horror Picture Show, and all kinds of ghostly activities. Now we've carried that tradition on for all of these years. And while it wasn't quite time to bring back the in-person tradition this year, we will definitely be back in 2022. But for right now, we're so excited to be able to bring to you this very unique broadcast. Now everything that you are going to enjoy tonight, from the hosting, to the sets, to the, to the creative films, to the fire dancing, was all created by local artists. There is a frightening amount of talent in this community. I know I'm excited and I hope that you are. Right now it's time for you to grab that popcorn, kick back and enjoy the Mercer Monster Mash Virtual Edition. Mercer Monster Mash was filmed in front of an undead audience. <laughs> Hello, gals and ghouls, and welcome to Mercer Monster Mash Virtual Edition. This Hallow's Eve, we have frights and delights, and we are so excited to share. I am Lacey the Good Witch, and this is my co-ghost, Roderick. <laughs> yeah. We will be your guides tonight. Stick around if you dare. Roderick, are you excited for the show? I'm a bit nervous, to be honest. Why? Are you scared of spooky movies? No, I just don't have the stomach for it. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't have a stomach. Well, then that's gonna just make this awkward because no movie is complete without something sweet. So we're going to move over to the kitchen and see what Harrison's got brewing. Bon appetit. <laughs> <coughs> Well, hello there, Harrison. How are you? Doing well, Lacey. Thank you. And yourself? I am doing just fine. Great. What are we making today? Today we're going to be making a vegan pumpkin spice creamer for coffees and cappuccinos and the likes. Excellent. Absolutely. Well, what are the, what are the first steps for this? So first, we're going to want to measure out just a little bit of vanilla so we can get that cooking in a pot while it's, get, while it's starting. We're gonna cook down the alcohol a little bit as well as just warm the pan up. Mm -hmm. So if you can, actually, I'll do this part just because that one's especially tinkery. And if you could start opening up the pumpkin spice mm -hmm. or pumpkin puree for me. People hardly ever trust me with sharp things anymore. That might be for the best. Now while that's going, you can just set that aside for a second. That will go with that. We're gonna start with a pumpkin spice, just basic seasoning. I'm gonna put a couple of tablespoons of that in. Three quarters of a tablespoon. All right. We're gonna have eighth of a cup of brown sugar. And give me two of those tablespoons of the pumpkin puree. We want to work all of our dry ingredients together before we add it, just so everything adds evenly. We don't have to go back through and puree anything or you know, get the right consistency. Nice. All right. Start stirring that. Mm -hmm. And I going to add this. You'll be able to smell the vanilla. You don't ever burn it. You want it to be on a medium or low heat. And once that's all mixed, you can go ahead and stir it in there. Pour it right on in? Yep. All right, and then you're gonna keep that on the heat and stirring it for a good amount of time, probably <laughs> probably about three to five minutes. 
Texture should be great. It will be nice and thick like a coffee creamer. And then all you have to do is add it to a cup of coffee and enjoy some pumpkin spice. Yeah? Yeah. All right, let's add the creamer after that. Cheers and joy. Happy immortality. Happy immortality. Yeah. Mmm. Oh god. That was fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us for cooking with Harrison. Happy Monster Mash. All is well and good at Camp Arrowhead until the spirit of camp rises one blood-curdling night. This film is not suitable for children, so grab your snacks, sit back, and enjoy Camp Arrowhead by Dylan C. Smith. Are you ready, sir? Yeah, let's do this. All right, everybody, listen up. All ears up here for our leader, okay? He is a Vietnam veteran, okay? People died in that war. It happened long before you guys could have feelings or be grateful for such a sacrifice, okay? So let's show some respect. It is my honor to announce Counselor Cochran. Uh, thanks there, Tim. Thanks. So here's what's gonna happen. Uh, as you know, the last couple of weeks here at Camp Arrowhead haven't been that great. Uh, what with the dead raccoon. What? Listen here, Buster Brown. There's nothing in these woods that can put a hurting on you like I can. Don't wake me up. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I love you. What with the dead raccoon in my bed, uh, the kids having sex in the hammocks. I don't know why they chose that place. <laughs> Oh, oh, let's not forget the X-Lax that was in my coffee and the saran wrap that was on my toilet when I got done with that X-Lax and I ended up pooping myself, thanks to you. Well, this week it's over. You're stuck with me until the end of August. There's gonna be no more disrespect, no more horseplay. I am Camp Arrowhead. If you try to pull a fast one on me, the camp spirit, AKA me, will know. Kelly, you still have those phone numbers of your friends? Call them, we need them for counselors. Uh, all right. Yes? Are you still a virgin? Matt, Matt, I need you to come have sex with me. So you're really gonna drag me to a camp because you've got a crush on a girl? Well, you know Kelly has some pretty slutty friends, man. So these girls of Kelly's, they're hot, right? Like, they're sexy. Dude, you know how hot Kelly is. I mean, these girls are gonna be like 10 out of 10s, every one of them at least. Oh, dude. So look, man, I gotta ask you something serious, okay? Do you think Kelly's interested in you? What? You know how she is, bro. She's, is she bored? What do you mean? I, yeah, it yeah, doesn't even matter. I just hope her friends are hot. Yeah. So his friend is really gonna be that hot. I mean, Chelsea, he's not Burt Reynolds. I'm just trying to get some potassium. Chelsea! <laughs> well, what about Bryce? Um, I've been with him. What about Zach? I have also been with him. <laughs> what about Austin? I've been with him twice. Look, I know you're not the type to just hit it and quit it, but maybe... Maybe what? All I'm saying is Matt's friend better be hot.
Now look, when we get up here, don't hit Kelly with one of those side hugs like you always do. Full-fledged hug that chick. Chest to chest. Look, Matt's a cutie, okay? I know he's gonna bring at least one guy that's hot. Oh my God, you slut! <laughs> I knew you liked Matt. Addy, I do not like him. I swear to God, we're like family. We grew up together. Yeah, okay. What I'm hearing is you're trying to grind one up for old time's sake. Whatever, I'm just gonna go to the lake. Yeah, yeah, okay. You sure you don't wanna stay for the view, though? <laughs> oh, God. Is Chelsea looking? I can't breathe. Please tell me. Oh, you know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, boys. Hey, hey, what's, what's up? up? What's up, Cochran? What's up, Cochran? <laughs> Gave you boys a job to do earlier today. Fix something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we forgot. Do you think you can just come into my world and play by your rules? I don't think so, son. Do you think Hitler crossed the Atlantic Sea to get to American soil? I don't know. Do you think that plastic surgery worked on your face? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. You think you think this is okay? You think you think you could just do what you no, want here? No, no, no. There no, are sure. rules in here. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Campers Lake now. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> All right, muchacho. Just picked up these dirty brownies. Who's our first victim? Jessica. She's a total jerk. She's always cussing at me. Dude, she's got Tourette's. Yeah. Can't like... You're right, you're right. How about that lifeguard down there? What, what's his name? Austin. Austin. It's been a long summer, Timmy. And I just, I don't think I've got it to come back next year. <clears throat> uh, Penny, for your thoughts, sir? You know, it used to be cool Camp Counselor Cochran. Now, it's just Camp Counselor Cochran. I miss the old spirit of Camp Arrowhead. You know what I mean? Well, if you don't mind me saying, sir, you seem a little fussy. Uh, may I please get you a cup of sleepy time tea to calm your nerves? How about I make you a knuckle sandwich? Well, that sounds straight up unpleasant, Counselor Cochran. Hey, Austin. Hey. Hey, not hey. now, guys. I'm trying to keep the water safe and the people in them safe. What do you all need? Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll leave you to it. The cook yeah. just um, sent us some brownies to give out to everyone who's been working so hard. We see you sweating out here. I have been working hard. I've been working damn hard. I'm out here. We'll leave you be. It's, it's so good to see you. This is my friend Jamie, by the way. What's up? And this is my friend Chelsea. She'll be showing you around. Chelsea, huh? I know a few of those. <laughs> I can't wait to show you around. I can show you the cabin we're staying at tonight. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bro, like, if I don't eat soon, I really might die. <laughs> Bro, if I don't see what's under Andy's clothes soon, I might die. <laughs> Bro. I think you got a chance. Like, you can get her into your bunk for some bunkum, bro. She's super horny. Man. Might as well be a rhino. <laughs> Yeah, like, the car ride was pretty good up. It, it wasn't bad or anything. I mean, there was no wrecks or traffic, if that's what you're thinking. And you drove the entire way? Well, I had to. I mean, Jamie was asleep the whole way, and the only bad part about that is, is night terrors. Ah! Oh, my God! Wow, that must have been really hard to deal with. Yeah, it was, but thanks to Mr. Melatonin, I don't even get him. Hey, who's that? Oh, you don't know about Jade? No. She's the kickboxing champ of the tribe. Oh, really? Yeah, she's a little rough around the edges, so we have to keep her away from the other campers at night. Wow. Yeah.
You're gonna love dinner. You finally get to meet everybody. Oh no, I'm I'm for real so excited. But first, I really like Kelly. I really wanted to. Uh, I wanted to tell you that. Oh I... my God, there he is now. Hey, babe. Matt, meet What's my up? boyfriend Tyler. What's good, babe? What's up? What's up, dude? What's up with you? What's up with you is the three of you are gonna get in the mess hall. You're under my skin, babe. Dude, did you see Timmy crying earlier? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why was he naked? <laughs> Wow, so you really fed a baby bird? Yeah, two actually. One of the eggs hatched right in front of us. It was honestly really beautiful. Wow, I just, <laughs> that's really so sweet of you. Thanks, I know. Coming, boys. I'm trying to eat good tonight. Dude, you are sick. You're, that's gonna keep you on the toilet all day long. Listen, man, don't be mad because I'm going to bed full and y'all are starving. That is shit. Uh, well, sir, I could take the Durango down to town and uh, get you some Ronald McDonald. Shut the hell up, Tim. Yes, sir. All right, I'm gonna give these little bastards one more chance. <laughs> I'm gonna give these little bastards one more chance. Hello? Listen up! God, here we go. All right, lollygaggers. There's no more cool camp counselor Cochran. It is now lead counselor Cochran. And you will be doing exactly as I tell you, starting right now. In fact, you can clean up all of the mess that you made in here and throw it away. <laughs> There's a stupid one, you're out. Yeah, did those boots come over on the Nina, the Penta, or the Santa Maria? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds more well, like Noah's Ark to me. <laughs> yeah, Cochran, you should kill yourself. <laughs> He knows we're just kidding, right? Yeah, I hope so. Dude, he's really not that bad. <laughs> you know who isn't half bad at all? Who? Addy over there. Now that, that's an idea. Hey, did you know that, that there's zoos? No. Y yeah, they uh, have rhinos. Tell me more. Yeah, babe, I think it's right up here. This is the spot, I'm telling you. Your secret makeout spot? Yep, right here. Brownie. Ah, still filming it. Time is it? Cochran, is that you? Is that you, you bastard? You know my pooping time is sacred to me, man. Get out of here.
I told you, man, it's a little late for Yeah, I do. Right, Jamie, cut it out. What? That wasn't me. Then what the hell was that? Um, Matt. It was Matt. Matt, man, cut it out. No, you need to go check that out. I really don't want to. Yeah, go check it out. Matt? 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 Come on, Matt? 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 So that's where I'm at. I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's like, why did I even come here? I mean, I'm gonna end up just a friend. Just like Bismarcky hey, said, just a hey, friend. Hey, now, look, you just drove here just a couple hours ago to see this beautiful woman. Now you need to go out there and get her. I don't know, she's with Tyler now. I mean, it just doesn't feel right. So, she's not married to him. You need to tell Kelly how you feel. How I feel? How I feel? Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. I need to go out there and tell her how I feel. I mean, why else did I come here? Hell yeah, man. Look, also, if you see Bryce, you need to tell him to keep it down. I'm going to be asleep, and he's been gone for hours to the bathroom. He never came back. I got you, dude. Thank you. Thank you, man. I got you. Yeah, so I just dug my finger down it and pulled that plastic ring right off that poor baby bird's stomach intestines. Wow. Yeah. You're so brave. Thanks, I know. Can I kiss you? Matt? What the hell, Mike? It's Matt. Don't what the hell me? I love her! Oh god, not again. It's that damn generator again. Ho hold on, hold on. This thing needs a man's touch. Well, I'm coming in anyways. Excuse me, sorry. Excuse me, sorry. Sorry, excuse me. Sorry. Matt, what are you doing here? Kelly, please! I know that you feel something. I know that you feel the way that I do, and I, I know that I know that I didn't drive all the way here just for you to hang out with this Tyler guy. Matt, what are you talking about? I, I'm an independent woman, okay? I mean, what do you want me to do? Kelly, I drove all the way just to be with you. So what are you mad? What did you expect to come up here and get with me? I mean, are you serious? I like Tyler. <laughs> uh, 
You just really need to go home. Kelly, I, dro I drove all the way up here for you. I Matt, please. Kelly, I just want to... Matt, get in your car and go home. Okay, somebody will give your friend a ride. I just... Please, just get out of here. You're watching Mercer Monster Mash Virtual Edition. Stick around if you dare. <laughs> can't be. Now it's time for one of my favorite activities. We're going to go to an ominous location for a lesson in plain air painting. Roderick, you seem like the creative type. Do you like painting? How could I enjoy painting, Lacey? I don't have eyes. <laughs> I don't. I don't have eyes. <laughs> yeah, but what about sculpting, where it's more about the feel? I can't feel. I'm a skeleton. I don't have nerves. You've known me for 300 years, Lacey. <laughs> well, anyways, grab your brushes and your paints and join me in the graveyard for a lesson in plain air painting. <laughs> yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Lacey, and welcome to plain air painting in this graveyard that we have here. Today we're going to be using a little bit of mixed medium. I'm going to use pencil and pens and watercolor and just a little bit of white acrylic paint here today. We have a gorgeous landscape here and I'm just going to start by deciding my composition. I want to have these two trees right here, the dead one and the alive one, kind of framing the, the middle here. So I'm going to decide where I want those trees. And you don't, especially with the pencil sketch, you want to be as light as possible. And you don't need to worry about detail. We're just going for like the approximate composition. So deciding where I want that landscape line and where those mountains should go. There's a dead tree sticking up over here. 
and just the loosest skeleton sketches that we could possibly have. So the advantage of kind of starting off with a pencil sketch is that you'll be able to get a lot more detail much quicker in whatever you're creating. So now that I've got this bare bones sketch uh, in pencil, I'm going to switch over to ink where I can start working in those shapes and kind of textures. We don't need to be perfectly in line with what's in front of us, because when is anything ever perfect? But it's nice to get an idea, especially for outlines or vague like textures that you see on the different um, surfaces. So just the tip when you're working, pick a couple of landmarks to put a little bit more detail in and that will give the much more of an illusion of realism than actually detailing every single individual leaf or plant. So if you just pick a spot to be like in focus in certain areas, it can add a lot of lifelikeness to your piece without having to go through all of the effort of doing everything. So we want to make sure that before we start our painting process, we get rid of all of our pencil lines because if we have any pencil lines going into the watercolor process, they will never go away. So we want to clean up the, the, our, our paintings as much as possible before we start putting paint down. Now, for when I inked this, I used a uh, India ink based pen because if you use a water based pen then it will run when you put paint down as well and we're going to start with our one of our bigger brushes and I'm going to separate this into warm and cool colors so the warm colors are going to be our oranges and yellows and reds that golden light that's coming through right now and our co cooler colors are what's going to be in shadow and in the sky so i'm going to take a light blue here make sure the brush is and it's okay if i go over the leaves a little bit we want to try to avoid soaking um, what's not supposed to be blue and blue because it's watercolor it's harder to take away but it's also especially for parts where the tree is thinner it's good to give it a little wash of blue I like to mix my colors right on the paper so that I have a little bit of color differentiation without really working for it. And since this is go like some of the trees are going to be a combination of colors, on a fatter brush you can literally put one color on one side and another color on another in order to get those leaves. So another thing that you can do is especially like if you have a definitive light source, like if it's closer to sunset, adding a little bit of a yellow glow can really make certain parts of your painting stand out and glow in the sun and glow in the golden hour sunlight.
Likewise, if your subject is right in front of the sun, it's going to look much more silhouetted. So on the edges of trees that are blocking the sun, if you just take a, if you add a dark glow to them on the outside, it can help push that light more. So I always like to promote risk taking in paintings and right now I'm really in love with how this golden hour is turning into blue hour, especially on the mountains in the background. So to bring out these mountains and to hopefully like create more atmosphere, I'm using a little bit of indigo and I'm just going to paint the parts in the shadow close to these trees with this indigo which will hopefully bring more depth to the mountains and to the overall piece. And the edges of the painting are not to be ignored either. If you want to go make your reds darker in order to kind of focus the piece into the center, you can add a little bit of that indigo to like a darker red and just tap it to make the abstract leaf patterns. And in a couple of those spots, you're gonna include a little bit of bright yellow or orange. And however those colors mix is just how they mix. So the reason why I wanted to start with penmanship tonight is because when I got out here, it was already golden hour. And to not miss out on the opportunity and knowing that I could get uh, more detail down quicker and focus more on the colors if I did this work in pen first. Um, the more likely it is that I could finish before it got dark. So a lot of times I'll opt for doing pen work in first so that in just in case I lose the light I can keep going. So taking a smaller brush I put a little bit of white paint on my palette and this is for doing anything like clouds or things that you know are just lighter because once you put watercolor on you can't really take it off and that doesn't really make clouds very easy. And plus with acrylic paint I feel you can actually build up the texture of the clouds more as well. Thank you so much for joining me this Monster Mash in this beautiful graveyard on a gorgeous October day. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And now for an illustrated story by Ash Gill and Christopher Clark. Enjoy. Wait, that's it? That's so short. I haven't even said anything yet. It's not fair. I'm sorry, <laughs> Roderick. What would you like to say? What's a skeleton's favorite band? What? The Grateful Dead. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, enjoy the story.
chant for the witching hour. Evening sun, down, done. Wild mist, wind, twist. Bat and wing, swoop, swing. Moonlit track, there, back. Witch's gate, watch, wait. Graveyard stone, shift, groan. Midnight shade, glide, fade. Hungry dark, roam, bark. Hallowed all, knock, call. A ghost story. When old October shivers down the lonesome midnight streets of town and oak leaves rattle, brittle brown, a little ghost goes fleeting. Beneath the moon, unheard, unseen, it wanders over and between a drift awake on Halloween in hopes of trick-or-treating. Bartholomew's Wings Bartholomew's wings are marvelous things. His tusks are unlike any other. And over your drinks, he will tell you he thinks he inherited them from his mother. The Artist The artist drew a creature. The creature came to stay. To tell one from the other gets harder every day. If you see them together and don't know who is who, recall a creature's drawn to draw from what the artist drew. A warning. This house is full of ghouls, he said, and shadows creeping overhead and sounds that scratch beneath your bed. So, if you step inside it, your heart may stop, your bones may break, your knees may knock, your soul may shake, and it may be a bad mistake. But you can say you tried it. And now it's time for another frightening film by Taylor Napier. It was the winner of the Vandalia Spooky TV 72-hour film festival in 2020. Just a reminder that this film is not suitable for children. Hey, hey Lacey, can I introduce this one? I haven't got to introduce one yet. Yeah, go for it. Get ready to feel shivers down your spine, to feel the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Without further ado, here is, um, here is, hey Lacey, what's the name of the movie? Countless. Countless. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Pada apa? Jiman ini kata nak kerubah berapa dah caca tu? Masak. Tahu tu? Tahu tu? Oh, long wash, long steam. Bukan tu pas. Nel korpion non mi sento. Prela lar giovan tu kajo. Mia, come ne? Scusa, dolce, ma no, mi pide che mi tosi, che mi pongi, che mi masti, che... Oh, c'è che... Il y a un cochon de ma cuisine! And now we would like to share with you a tale too strange for fiction. This is the true story of the last woman to ever be convicted of witchcraft by Sam Franz. Hi there. Welcome to the virtual Mercer Monster Mash. I'm Sam the Man. Happy Halloween to you, my dear friend. Tonight, I want to share with you a tale that's too strange for fiction the true story of the very last witch ever convicted of witchcraft in Virginia. Grace Sherwood was born in the Virginia colony in the year 1660. Grace was naturally affectionate to animals from a young age. She was also fascinated with herbal remedies. Nobody knows today exactly what Grace looked like, but she was described as incredibly beautiful. Grace's neighbors grew suspicious of the beautiful woman who spoke to animals and made herbal remedies. Many of these neighbors also wanted Grace's land for their own. In 1697, Richard Capps accused Grace of cursing his livestock to death. In 1698, John Gisburn accused Grace of enchanting his crops to wither. And the accusations just grew wilder from there. Elizabeth Barnes accused Grace of transforming into a black cat, attacking her and escaping right out the keyhole. Further accusations against Grace included casting spells, bewitching sailors, causing miscarriages, and even dancing with the devil himself. In 1706, Grace Sherwood was brought to court and formally tried for witchcraft. A jury of 12 ancient and knowing women were appointed to examine Grace's body to look for the mark of the devil. The forewoman of this jury was Elizabeth Barnes, the same Elizabeth Barnes who had previously accused Grace of transforming into a black cat. Barnes and her fellow jurors testified that Grace had been marked by the devil. Grace protested her innocence. She said to the court, I be not a witch. I'd be a healer. The magistrates decided to test Grace by ducking her in water. They reasoned that since water is so pure, a witch would be rejected by the water and float up to the top, but an innocent woman would surely sink to the bottom. On July 10th, 1706, Grace was taken to the mouth of the Lynn Haven River. The weather was sunny. Her thumbs were tied to her feet. A 13-pound Bible was tied to her neck, she was placed into a sack. 
A crowd of rowdy onlookers gathered near the shore. The crowd started shouting and chanting, Duck the witch! Grace was heard to exclaim, Before this day be through, you will all get a worse ducking than I. The sheriff then tossed Grace into the river. But there's one thing the sheriff didn't consider. Grace knew how to swim. Grace freed herself from the sack and the ropes, and she swam right back up to the surface. Just then, a, a sudden storm blew in, and an unexpected downpour drenched the whole crowd. Grace was right. They all got a worse ducking than she did. The spot along the Lynn Haven River is still called Witch Duck Point to this very day. Grace was hauled off to jail, but a funny thing happened while Grace was in jail. All of Grace's accusers fell ill and died under mysterious circumstances. Must have been a coincidence, right? When the local magistrates also met his end, the authorities decided perhaps it was best to set Grace free. They never again convicted anyone of witchcraft in Virginia. Grace returned home. She reclaimed her land, and she lived to the age of 80 in peace and contentment. Local legend says that on the day Grace finally died, a strange wind blew down her chimney. Her body disappeared in the embers, and the only clue was cloven hoof prints. But that's probably just a legend, right? 300 years after Grace's conviction, the governor of Virginia pardoned Grace for the crime of witchcraft. Today, there are markers and statues in Grace's honor. Local residents near Witch Duck Point still report a strange moving light near the spot where Grace was ducked in the water 300 years ago. Thanks so much for hearing the story of Grace Sherwood, the last convicted witch in the colony of Virginia. By the way, if you happen to see any little witches running around, be sure to give them an extra piece of candy for Grace. Happy Halloween, my friends. Monster Mash Virtual Edition. Stick around if you dare. <laughs>
Now, if you will, join us for an original murder ballad by Andrew Atkins called Echoes. <laughs> There she stands on the banks of the Ohio We all know what happens there Moonlight shone down upon her green eyes The wind blew her all in hand Sunday dress she borrowed from her sister Sweet maiden fair you could see her light up the darkness Beauty filled the air Willie, why'd you come here? You knew there would be a fight And I hear your voice calling Echoes through the night He said, my sweet darling, how I love you Please be my bride We can run off to Knoxville We can play tonight Her answer to him was quite simple You are not the one that I long for I will not be your wife From his coat he pulled a day He threw her to the ground From her blue she pulled a pistol She rolled him to the water Whispered goodbye I swear that the ghost of that river Standing by her side Willie, why'd you come here? You knew there would be a fight I hear your voice calling Haunts me every night Haunts me every night And now for a scary film by Say Lucas Following the death of her twin. Hey, Lacey. Did I ever tell you I have a twin? Look, look. Come here. Come here. Yes, get, don't be shy. He is, his name is also Roderick. No need to kill him, though. We're already dead. <laughs> get out of here. This is my show. Go. Get. Get. Okay, sorry. Continue. <sighs> but following her sister's demise, she finds herself returning to the scene and instead finds out a horrible truth.
like it though. I feel it. No if, ands, or buts about nothing. Everything speaks. Even the dead. The dead speaks. Y'all don't know what's going on. I don't either. So whatever is going on, it's gonna go on forever and ever and ever. All right, let's see the presents that you got. I don't, I don't, I don't see any. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you. Hey, yeah, that's me. Let's get this picture over there. I think that's of you. Nice. No, that's not really me. I, I dress better. <laughs> sure. Okay, now. Now oh, he's ready. Now look at you. you. You really made me look bad. Wow. Good. Uh, you gotta keep him. <laughs> All right, folks. Wait. All right. Oh, no. To you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Amanda, happy birthday to All units, we have a 1016 at 3220 Jefferson Avenue requesting immediate backup. Beware of a hostile situation. You think it's her? The, the Madden girl? Just be ready. Welcome, my brothers. Welcome, my sisters. On this auspicious occasion, it is that time once again for our ceremony. We congregate in this place and in this time to rejoice, to strengthen our fellowship, and to celebrate. This young woman in front of me, among numerous others, is willing to sacrifice herself for our cycle to live on in perpetuity. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. Police! Police! Get your job! Dispatch, this is Sierra 12. We have a suspect down, and we have seven others that we're taking into custody. I think we found our missing girl. Hey, Garrity. What the hell is this, man? I don't know. First thing you should do when you hear a smoke alarm is try and get outside. If you have fire on you, you stop 
drop and roll. And the fire department will yell, but that does not mean that you're in trouble. Elk are native to Kentucky, but were wiped out in the 1800s. About 20 years ago, the elk were reintroduced, and the population in the state has grown. Yeah, don't drink too much. I don't even drink. Oh, let's go! Oh, let's go! <laughs> That's fair. Are you guys buckled? Seriously? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Sam, are you okay? <laughs> I don't God. think we're going in the right direction. I think Let me do the open. driving, you do the shutting up, all right? We'll, we'll handle it. We'll divvy it up just like that. You know what? Your job, I'll, I'll make That's sure that we feed you guys. Fire. I've waited for this my whole life. And now it's finally time. I think they're almost here. I guess this is it. got the house, it was a mortuary. Y'all don't know what's going on. I don't either. So, whatever is going on, it's gonna go on forever and ever and ever.
with anybody's situation in life. Everything speaks. Even the dead, the dead speaks. I'm sorry. I just didn't know where you went. I was just looking for you. I'm fine. I'm just looking around. Okay. okay. Look, Samantha, we can leave if you want to. We don't have to stay here. No, no, I want to. You just don't have to sneak up on me. Okay. All right. Fine. Let's just go back upstairs. Guys, you really shouldn't smoke around gasoline. Whoa, it's safe. Dude, this place is huge. I know, Ryan. It's gonna be a shame to see it on the news. What's in there? Yo, come check this out. <laughs> Share. <laughs> hey, uh, you uh, wanna head upstairs to check it out? All right, after you, let's go. Here, yeah. let me, let me help you with this. So yeah, you gotta push down. I'm going to call my mom really quick. I'll be back. Okay, just come back soon. making me philosophical, but I feel like coming here just really like connected all of us, you know? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> 
Preston? Preston? Preston, oh my god, are you okay? I just wish they could realize that it's not personal. I just wish that they could see that the ceremony is so much bigger than us, than all of us. I just wish they could know that none of this is personal. I have waited my whole life for this. This young woman in front of me, among numerous others, is willing to sacrifice herself for our cycle to live on ashes. generations it has given us life eternal, not without cost. Today, my offering is due, as is theirs. I have waited for this my whole life. And now it's finally time.
Samantha! <laughs> we, we leave. We leave right now. our small town earlier this week when eight high school students died in what appeared to be a failed arson attempt. Today, the community and their loved ones hold a celebration and memorial service in remembrance of their young lives snuffed out too soon. Sergeant Michael Garrity resigned from the force recently after the case transpired. Look, look, watch out, man. Listen, listen. I don't want to talk about this right now, man. Never understood the situation before. Never been in this situation before, man. I don't, I don't know what that was. Can't be explained. We have to do what we have to do, whatever is necessary. You understand? And what was going on in there, what we saw, and I don't want to talk about it right now. I don't understand it, so get out of my face. I'm Janelle Moore reporting live.
celebration is complete without pumpkin carving, so please enjoy the work of Shannon of Frostline Ice. Hey all, Shannon Gersomchik here, coming to you from New Bremen, Ohio. Really wish I could be there tonight. I love coming to Monster Mash on Mercer Street in the Grassroots District. Um, can't be there, but come along with the journey. We're going to carve this uh, awesome pumpkin and see what creation we can make out of it. watching tonight. Thank you Riff Rap Arts Collective and Linear New Entertainment for producing this broadcast. It was so awesome hanging out with you guys this evening. I hope you guys have a great Halloween and check out our guy that we created tonight. We'll see you soon. Thank you all so much for joining us for Mercer Monster Mesh 2021 in this virtual space. I would like to also thank my co-host Roderick it was my pleasure. Very nice to work with you, Lacey. <laughs> and everybody at the Riff Raff who made this possible. Thank you again for tuning in, and I hope that you have a wonderful, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween! <laughs> <coughs> Bye. Oh, Roderick, you always tickle my funny bone. Y'all, I hope you were as thoroughly entertained by that broadcast as I was. Am I right? We have a frightening amount of creative talent in our community. We hope that you have enjoyed Mercer Monster Mash Virtual Edition as much as we've enjoyed creating it for you. We know that we will see you all again in downtown Princeton for Mercer Monster Mash 2022. Until then, y'all have a happy Halloween. Good night, everybody. I guess that's the end of the show. <laughs> okay guys, production, Robert, somebody, you left the lights on, the fog machine's going, I don't see anybody. I might be a painting, but don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Seriously guys, oh, cameraman, I see a cameraman. Can you get me down from here? It's quite unpleasant. <laughs> Seriously, oh, okay, I guess you're walking away. Oh, this happens every time. Oh, well. <laughs>